Okay, good night. So, I mean, I think ultimately what the crux here lies down to is molecular phylogenetics. Which, you're just going to claim it's dirt in the ground, but unfortunately it does a lot more than that. Well, I would say, that wouldn't you say phylogenetic systematics relies heavily upon uh, non-functional nuclear and mitochondrial DNA differences? Like, isn't that a primary assumption? Because that all goes back to now, uh, you know, the junk DNA argument that also goes back to we can include that if you want to but that doesn't change the result yeah but i'm trying to say if you're looking at these genetic markers and assuming that they're evolutionary leftovers based on past common ancestors and we're showing that these are actually functional differences based on pre-existing heterozygosity that means these phylogenetic charts are based on a primary assumption that molecules to man evolution is true but now we know it's not true so now these phylogenetic charts are just lines on paper go ahead no, so none of that needs to be assumed. What needs to be assumed is that certain genes that exist in the past have some distinct function that arose from previous genes that we can find within organisms, and that we can map and somehow determine a distance and somehow an age for these organisms and for these genes that we're observing. As so he said, though, those are just lines on paper. That's what it comes down to. Because the whole point is if they're functional, they now become a common design argument instead of a common ancestry um, argument. So just like Warning said, now they're just lines on paper and lines on paper aren't evidence for anything really. And I understand that if they are just plagiarized mistakes, because I understand the, the evidence for evolution very well. And yes, plagiarized mistakes would point to universal common ancestry, but if they're functional DNA differences encoded from the start, then no, 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 that's, that's evidence for design. And, and that's a prediction made um, you know, by our model. Go ahead. Well, I mean, it depends on what... You... So again, for something to be functional, it has to have something that can cause it to function. Well, Which do you want to... Tell... Going in the ground, that's not going to work. I've already told you that, you know, expressive, regulatory, embryological, placental roles, these are functional roles. And clearly ENCODE has, has revealed that 80% is transcription. I understand that you say that that's spurious transcription, but it proves that, that they're not idle. And it proves that we know very little about the genome. For example, you know, protein moonlighting is, is something that was newly discovered, um, you know, not too long ago. And, and that reveals that proteins have multiple functions. And the more we, we learn and study the genome, the more we realize you know, just how complex and, and functional it, it really is. Of course. I mean, that's not surprising. Well, that's evidence for... Well, it's multidimensional. No think. nucleotide in the genome is idle anymore. That's that's a fact. So spurious transcription and you know just labeling all these important functions that I've that I've stated as uh, you know not really functional at all. I mean I, I see that personally as as a rescue device uh, because idle was the basis of uh, for junk DNA in two thousand one. But now we know they're not idle. So now you know the theory has to be adapted to fit. The data. There's always a lot of adapt. Let me ask you: How many vestigial organs were listed a um, hundred years ago? Wasn't it like 140 or something? I don't know. Probably. I'll take it. Was about, for it. Yeah, it was like 142. And now there's about five or six arguable ones that I would say aren't vestigial, but that's a huge, huge difference. So that's just based on ignorance, because obviously they didn't realize, you know, what things like our tonsils and um, you know, our thyroid and obviously the appendix and coccyx and all these different things were, were for. But now they realize that these things actually have important functional roles and now they're not listed as vestigial anymore. So how do you feel about that? Well, it's based on existing data, just the way has Mendel tried to prove with his own experiment. Exactly. So people make wrong conclusions. That's perfectly fine. That's okay, how scientists so learn. So what makes you think that these vestigial genes or pseudogenes or junk DNA is not exactly the same thing as the ignorance of, uh, you know, the vestigial organ era? It's the same thing. I mean, I don't see why you don't see that. No, because I would see that, you know, if a gene is indeed functional, if it's non-vestigial, we should see it being transcribed in an organism at a relatively fair, at a regular, regular 80% transcribed. Sure. I mean, how much of that is spurious transcription now? Once again, I, I would say very limited of it, based on all the the important functions that I've already listed, and you know, sure. I can certainly go back I mean, to those. Would you consider one transcription event out of like eighty thousand to be rare? Well, like I said, um, no nucleotide question. in. Well, I, I don't believe that that's even the case. Because I'm saying no nucleotide in the genome is idle. I'm saying it's all 
functional minus a few pseudo genes based on genetic entropy. I mean, that's our prediction. And that's, it seems like we're the ones that are making the predictions. You know, it seems like you guys are just coming up with all the rescue devices uh, based on all the, the current literature. Go ahead. Even if, even if some percent of it is, you know, even if it is all dynamic, there's only certain regions that are functional. We've mapped the human genome and we can tell which parts are functional and which parts aren't. I mean, you could alter a gene and make it functional, but that's not exactly the same thing as dealing with something that already has, you know, that that's already existing.